Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and we're still um, kind of setting up our environment here as we try to build a application with Koa, Node, and Mongo. And while several of these videos will be setting up our environment, here's the good news. You only have to do this once. Once we get done with all of the setup, what I recommend is sort of copying and pasting this folder, making a copy of this folder and all the relative files and packages and everything that we, we set up together and having it as your boilerplate. So that way in the future, if you want to just build an application, you already have all the stuff set up for you because um, you already set it up once. But it's important that you do set it up once because it'll help you understand sort of how everything connects and where everything's working, which is going to make a life a lot easier when it comes to troubleshooting. So bear with me as we go through a few more things to kind of set up our environment. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to add a little bit more to Nunjuk's uh, capabilities and I'll explain what I mean and we're also going to add um, environment variables and we'll learn what those are. So first back to Nunjux because we're talking about views and whatnot. Now the thing about Nunjux when you do it with Koa views so that's where we, we set up um, let's see here Koa views where I have it set up right over here we set up Koa views now the problem with Koa views which works and we have it set up we'll be able to render our index.html like in our route over here where we sent it to index.html we sent some information it'll use a template there but there's a lot of other features of nunjux that that won't pick up because it's not necessarily looking for other files or it's not looking for other stuff so you what you want to do is you also want to just install nunjux natively or basically outside of the co-environment so basically what you do is you're going to create another you're going to create a nunjux object like this so right under where you created views um in our last video coa views you're going to create these two lines of code okay const and you can call it whatever you want i just call it nun just to make it shorter you can a lot of people call it nunjux um whatever but require the nunjux package and then we have to configure it so that way the this nunjux object that's kind of freestanding away from your coa routes okay so we have we had to set it up with Koa before with Koa view so that way our routes could go to that index.html and then this is going to make it where we can kind of see some other files it'll pick up on other nunjuk files and just render them and it'll look inside the views folder so anytime we use a nunjuk file in the views folder it will just render it for us and pick up on it so those two lines of code will open up the world to some new features that'll make life a lot easier how so Okay, let's go back to our index.html. So what I did here is I, I used a feature of Nunjux called includes. What this does, it allows you to say, hey, right here, include the code in this file. So this case, for, for example, the code inside your head tag, would you really want to have to type that out over and over again for every page that you do? Same thing with the stuff in your header tag and your footer. Okay, so that way you can do your navigation. So what I did to put three includes that are just like this. And then I, what I did is I created a folder inside the views folder called includes and created three files. Head.njk, that's the, that's the extension for nunjuk files. Header.njk and footer.njk. So now I can just go into those files and so this is like the head. So all my, my title tag, here I put like a link to boot, you know, CDM for Bootstrap, uh, not Bootstrap, Materialize, but you could do Bootstrap or Bulma or UI Kit, whatever you want to use. And if you wanted to use your own CSS file, you can go put it in your public folder. So what I did is I made a CSS folder in my public folder, and then you'll be able to just kind of call it this way. So slash CSS slash style that CSS. It's important that you do it that way because if you do this, it's going to look inside. That means inside the same folder. But when you do this, it's actually looking at a, it's looking at your root URL, which means it's going to default to that public folder, then look for the CSS folder, and then look for the style.css inside there. Okay, in this so or whatever you decide to name your CSS file. But you can do all your head stuff here, and now all your pages, as long as you have that include, is there. Okay, so if I go back to my index.html, literally the only content I have to make every time is this. And then when I want to make another page, I can just duplicate the page. You know, just make right click and just copy and paste to make another one. Okay. 
And all I have to do is again, edit this part because my navigation will be in my header. My footer will be in my footer and it'll be the same on every page. That's the benefit of include. That's why we added those extra lines of code so we can have that extra nunjuk, nunjuk functionality. And there's even more, you can even make this even more modular if you wanted. Um, but I don't wanna get too complicated too quick, but I wanna set these pieces up just because in the future it's gonna make it a lot easier to get to our end product by having this one page where all we have to do worry about is our body. So now if you want, between this and the next video, go into your head, header and footer instead of actually designing your website. So actually, and if you're not very familiar with how to do the HTML and CSS, uh, go to my other video series where I did HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and went over the basics of just basic design and just start building out sort of, again, the top and bottom of your page, leaving sort of where the content's gonna be in the middle blank for now. Just build that out to make your blog, okay? And then again, so just set these three areas up in these three files and you're good. Now, the other thing I wanna make sure we have set up is environment variables. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna be getting very soon implementing Mongo, which is a database. Um, so that way we can store blog data for our posts, but it's gonna require us to kind of have a, a URL uh, that connects to our Mongo database for Mongo Atlas. And that URL, if you just leave it in your code, other people can see it and connect to your database. So you don't necessarily want that, but you need to have it in your code to connect to it. So there's gotta be a way for me to connect to it in my code without necessarily showing everybody the information. That's what environment variables help you do. Okay, so environment variables allow you to create variables that people won't see in your main code. So to do that, let's go back to our index and see how you set that up. We're gonna put that at the very top of our file. You're gonna go install the environment variables library, which is .env. So you're gonna mpii.env. You're gonna install it, and then you're just gonna put this line of code, require.env.config. Put that code and now you can use it. The way .env works, okay, is you put a variable in a file called .env. So you'll create that in your main folder for your project, and you can just create variables here. So we'll say name equals Alex Merced, okay? So there's a variable in my .env folder, and we'll use that in one of our routes. So let's go back to our index. Go back to our routes. So here's our sort of root route. So before I was giving it the name Alex Merced, but let's say I don't want that there. I, I wanna just put a variable there. So I could put process.env. That's gonna look for my environment variables. And then I put dot, let's see here. How did I write in there? Was it a uppercase? I did do it all uppercase. So it's case sensitive, so you gotta be careful for that. Name. Okay, dot process.env dot name. Okay, and that should just, what it'll do is when it sees that, it's gonna go look in the .env file and then pull up and use that variable. This is great in your development. Now, later on, when we actually deploy this, we're gonna have to figure out how to add our environment variables to our production environment. We'll cross that bridge. We'll do a whole thing on Heroku later on. Um, but cool, so that's, so let's go run up our server, make sure that works. Okay, so let's see here, node index.js, uh, nope, okay, it's listening. So, let's go over to port 85, and there it goes, see? It says my name, Alex Merced. And again, it's no longer in the code, it's actually referring to that environment variable in the code. So this allows me to put all sorts of variables in my code without having to show information I don't want shown. But here's the other thing you gotta be careful for. Later on, you're gonna wanna put this code online so that way you can share your code, especially if you're doing this as like a portfolio piece for your web development portfolio or something like that. You don't necessarily wanna put that personal information out there either and accidentally upload your .env file. So what you wanna do, if you don't know how to use Git and never used Git before, don't worry about this next piece. Come back to it when you do decide you wanna use Git or have learned Git, because it will be important for that or just do it anyways and just have it there because you may need it someday, you're gonna create a file called .gitignore. What this file does is that if you ever decide to use git to, come to keep track of your code, this tells it what files to not keep track of. So 
this way, when you push it to online to a remote repository, whether that's Heroku or GitHub or somewhere else, it won't push these files. It, so the .env, because I'm putting all that personal those personal variables there, I don't want that somewhere everyone can see it. And the node modules folder, because all these modules, what will happen is that generally when you do, when you upload the code, you don't need to upload all these modules with it uh, for your GitHub. And then when you deploy it to Heroku, uh, Heroku will automatically go to your package.json, look at your dependencies and install your dependencies. That's why the package.json is so important. Okay, but you don't want to have to set, upload your also your modules folder because it's just extra stuff you're uploading, just you're taking longer, especially if you're using a lot of dependencies that could take a while to upload. So best not to do it. So just make sure that you know, your package.json is all good and uh, you're fine. Here, I'll put my name here and off it. You know, it doesn't hurt to go back and you know edit your package.json if there's anything you want to change. But yeah, so basically what we learned here, so again, we've added that extra functionality for Nunjuck, so that way you can do includes. Okay, and then if we actually go back, so if, again, if we go take a look at our index.html and our views, you see all I have in the head tag is just this little snippet here saying include this file. But if we go back to our browser, because the server is still running, what you can do is you can hit Control Shift I, and this brings up the Chrome developer tools. This is a great way of kind of keeping track of what's going on in your code. But here, if you go to the Elements tab, it'll actually give you a breakdown of what's on your website. So now if I break this down, if I take a look inside the head tag, hey, there's all this stuff here. Now, where did that stuff come from? It's because I had it in the file that's being referenced. So in this head.njk file, that's where all that code's coming from. Okay. And then if I refresh it, let me go refresh it because I just save that so we can see all that extra code. Save, refresh. There we go. Cool. We see our meta tags, our title, all that fun stuff. Okay, so that's it for now. In the next video, I think what we'll do is we'll probably start connecting Mongo now, just so that way we have everything kind of connected and set up. And then we'll just focus on actually developing the application. Um, but yes, make sure to again, start building out your website. So if you now you can run your server, you know where to start doing your HTML and your CSS. So start designing your website, kind of have something that you like, leave that area in the middle available for when we put in content and we'll kind of take it from there. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and enjoy.